Hello, welcome back to Through the Trap Door. I'm Katie. And I'm Emily. And we're going to read some more Harry Potter fan fiction. Woo! Uh, so we're now in chapter six of A New Leaf to Turn. All right, so last time Harry showed up at the Dursleys to meet Will and the family and talk about wizard school. I would just like to do a quick tangent. Uh, I mean, it's not really a tangent, but I feel like if you're going to show up so late to talk about things, why would you then leave like 15 minutes later? Right? Like he And sh- then didn't really talk about anything. Handed him a giant book about Hogwarts history. It's like, started chapter 17, gave your sister a magical cloak. Gotta go. Bye. Like, that's it. Like, he showed up, came in rummaged through his wallet shoulder deep for like 10 minutes gave will a book and then was like oh it's really late bye come to dinner yeah and that was it yeah like why couldn't he send an owl that was like hey are you free for dinner tomorrow night like i'll come pick you up like we'll go out to a nice muggle restaurant. And I don't know about a muggle restaurant. We'll, we'll like kind of calm everybody's nerves and meet everyone, and right? Then and then go. We'll go back to my house and talk or about your house, yeah, even. It or doesn't matter. even Dudley's house and talk about regular wizard things. Yeah, you know, just the day to day wizard life. Not oh, can't promise you it's not all evil, but hey, can't promise that about the muggle world either. Thank you, Harry. By the way, it's really gonna go. What? Bye. Okay. Yeah. So, tangent aside. And that was last week in a nutshell. (laughs) That's what happened last week. All right. Chapter six. Dudley watched as Mari squealed happily. Yay, we get to go to Mr. Harry's house. Harry smiled at the Dursley family. Wonderful. I'll tell Ginny that you will all be coming tomorrow. Diane nodded picking up Mari from the floor. Could you give us directions to your house? We won't have to take a train, will we? At this, Harry laughed. Oh no, Diane, don't worry about trying to find our house. It will just be easier if I come by tomorrow and pick you up. How does 4.30 sound? Dudley's heart almost stopped at the thought of Harry picking them up. Would he come through the fireplace like when those red-haired wizards took Harry when they were 14? If so... Would the green fire hurt Diane and Mari, even himself, for not being magical? Dudley didn't want to think about that possibility. But he knew he had to, especially if it could very well be a real possibility. Uh, Harry, how do you plan on picking us up? Dudley felt like he must have sounded like a real idiot to his family. If the look on Will's face was anything to go by, but Dudley was quite aware of various alternative ways to travel, especially those used by wizards. Well, I thought a car would be best, Harry said without missing a beat. I'm pretty sure it will fit everyone. Way to be, Harry. Like, way to actually use your noggin. I appreciate it. (laughs) Harry's so sassy. Like, next level sassy. I love it. I know. I love sassy Harry. I love when he comes out. (laughs) That's why I think that I feel like Daniel Radcliffe was perfect because he is just so sassy and I love Right, and like I love when the movies added some sass that wasn't necessarily in the books, like the (laughs) spider pinchers. Yeah, I really hope you guys got that from the... (laughs) Definitely feel like an idiot now, Dudley mused. But since when did wizards drive cars? Since they had to travel in the muggle world, Dudley, it happens. Yeah, Dudley. But Diane was oblivious to her husband's embarrassment. 4.30 sounds just wonderful, Harry. She extended her free hand to Harry. I look forward to meeting your wife and children. Harry shook Diane's hand happily, and I'm sure Ginny will be happy to meet you, not to mention the fact that Lily and Mari will hit it off just fine. Our recording buddies are now coming to help us. Yep. I'm sure you've heard their little pitter-patters in the background every week. We just need carpet. (laughs) Will shook Harry's hand after his mother. Thanks for coming, Professor Potter. You don't have to call me that, Harry chuckled sheepishly, rubbing the back of his neck. At least not until school begins. Harry noted Will's embarrassment. 
but said nothing about the matter. Instead, he turned his attention to Dudley. Would you mind if I left from here? As opposed to Dudley just stared at his cousin. Of course not. We won't make you go anywhere else. He trailed off, not sure what his cousin was asking. At Dudley's confusion, Harry smiled. Great, well, I'll see you tomorrow. He stole a glance at the grandfather clock. Today, at 4.30 this afternoon. I look forward to having you in my home. I best be on my way. Mr. Harry, don't forget your cloak. Mari suddenly remembered that she was wearing his cloak. But as she reached for the clasp, Harry stopped her. Keep it. Just think of it as a gift for all those birthdays I've missed. The older wizard smiled at the girl, whose eyes brightened happily. And now, Dursley family, I bid you a good night. And with that, Harry turned on his heel. And with a sharp crack, he was gone. Mari stared at the spot Harry once stood. Mr. Harry vanished! Diane's eyes were almost popping out of her skull, moving her lips dumbly to try and get them to work again. I'll say, she muttered. Even Dudley was surprised. He's never done that before. Well, no, because he didn't have his license yet. You True. Last time you saw him, he wasn't even 17 yet, Dudley. Yeah. Will had taken a step back in shock. Will I be able to do that? At this question, Diane just shook her head. I don't know, Will, but it's way past everyone's bedtime. Dudley watched as his wife struggled to keep from rolling her eyes at Mari's whining. But mom, I'm not tired, the little girl fussed as Diane carried her upstairs. It's the weekend, can't we stay up? Diane sighed, having heard this argument several times before. We did stay up, Mari, and now it's time to go to bed. Diane moved the nine-year-old girl into her bedroom, Dudley close behind. Mother and daughter seemed to bicker the entire time. Diane tried to get Mari ready for bed. Only Mari could make getting undressed look like a professional wrestling match. Dudley came to his wife's rescue as they helped their daughter get ready for bed. She's nine. That's what I was Why just thinking. Why are you helping her? Like, she is in third grade or fourth grade. Like, she is old enough to get ready for bed her damn self. You don't need to carry her up the stairs or help her get dressed. You may not be tired now, Mari, but you'd better get to sleep so that when we go over to Harry's house, you have plenty of energy to play with Lily. At this, Mari paused, giving Diane the opportunity to get her daughter's nightgown onto her. You don't want to be tired when you visit the wizard's house, do you? Mari sat on her bed, quiet for a moment or two. Is Lily nice, Daddy? She said, finally swinging her legs. What if she's mean? Dully sat next to his daughter. I'm pretty sure no daughter of Harry's would be mean, he said, kissing Mari's forehead. Now please, Mari, go to bed. But Dad, no buts, Mari, Dudley said sternly as he tucked his daughter into bed. Sleep tight, pumpkin. I will, Dad, Mari said sweetly making Dudley smile as he left her room slowly. Once he turned out the light in his daughter's room, Dudley suddenly felt calm. This he could handle. He may not have been the best at explaining the world of magic to his family, but he could tuck his daughter in at night and make her feel loved and safe in her own bed. And as Dudley made his way down the hall into his own bedroom, he felt satisfied with himself as a father. Crazy day, huh? Diane said, snapping Dudley out of his thoughts. His wife was already under the covers of their bed, exhausted. Well, she's had a long day. Yeah. I would consider that a very long day. Yeah. Crazy doesn't even begin to cover it, Dudley muttered to his wife as he got in ready for bed. Diane just watched her husband from her spot on the bed, too tired to move. Finally, after watching her husband brush his teeth, Diane spoke again. Will's going to be okay, isn't he? As Dudley laid beside his wife on their bed, he pondered his wife's question. Will was certainly a lovable young boy, and he always got along well in his classes. He never picked fights like Dudley had when he was young. Will had never had a problem making friends. But would the magical world be the same as their world? Would Will be picked on for not knowing as much about magic as the other kids? Would he be able to catch up with all the other children in his classes after such a late start? 
What if he couldn't? Dudley paused, catching up with his train of thought. Harry had been just like Will. Harry was a late starter learning about magic, and he didn't know anything about magic before going to Hogwarts. And Harry was just fine. Yes, Diane. Will is going to be more than okay. Her husband smiled to his wife as the two turned out the light and quickly fell asleep. If only they had remembered that they had two children that should have been asleep. What the hell do magical kids do before they turn 11? I often wonder that. <laughs> like, what, what, what do they do? What do they do? Like, how come nobody teaches these children, like, math or anything? Like, do they learn it at home? Because, like, even the Weasleys, like, the little bit of home life that you see for them, like, it doesn't seem like they spend any time tutoring math or anything. Right. So, like, how do they know? Like, math is very important to, like, potion making and apparently charms and arithmancy. Well, arithmancy is basically math, apparently. But, (sighs) yeah. Or, like, what about, like, basic, like, home ec classes or the big one? Any kind of sexual education at all. Will sat alone in the family room. Not only did they leave their poor child and not tucked in, he's apparently still sitting in the family room. Did you leave all the lights on in your house? Like, your electric bill must be ridiculous. Like, I have so many questions regarding their lifestyle right now. Like, did you leave all your lights on? Did Did you even lock the front door? Did you turn the lights off on your son? And he's sitting in the dark. What is going on? I need answers. Okay. Will sat alone in the family room, not knowing what he wanted to do. He knew he should go to bed, but there was so much going through his mind. Like the fact that not even 24 hours ago, he was just excited to be going to the zoo. Now he had to deal with the fact that he would be attending a school his parents had never heard of. Dudley had heard of it. Your mother has never heard of it. Also, there's nothing wrong with being excited about the zoo. The zoo is an exciting place. Truth. Away from all of his friends. Oh, and the fact he was a wizard? Yeah, that's a lot. That's a lot to deal with. Yeah. A wizard? Will's head was running every thought at high speed. Like Merlin. Or or Gandalf. The blonde boy shook his head, staring at the massive book left by his father's cousin. Maybe massive wasn't the right word for it. But Will couldn't possibly worry about the right word to describe his birthday gift. After a few moments staring at the book, Will opened the well-worn book to the chapter Harry had told him to read from. Chapter 17. Hogwarts in the 20th century. Will bit his lip, mentally wincing at the amount of history he was about to read, but pushed himself forward anyways. This book was Will's only way to learn about this school until he could talk to Harry again. And Will couldn't wait that long. He had to know now. I can understand that. Like, I can understand that. Yes. A passage of time. Will hadn't even noticed that almost an hour had passed since his family went up to bed, and his eyes were still glued to the massive book in his lap, trying to wrap his head around everything he had just read. So that means that's somewhere between 1 and 2 in the morning. Go to bed, child. Yeah. You're 11. Sleep. I don't think that I stayed up that late ever as an 11-year-old. I don't think I stay up that late as an adult. Also true. I probably couldn't tell you the last time that I saw one or two in the morning other than when I wake up at um, one or two in the morning to go pee. So that's, that's the only time I see it. Uh, maybe New Year's. I'm usually asleep. I do stay up for New Year's. Mm. I do do that. The school was actually a castle in Scotland. At least now we know where it is. And it resided beside a lake and a forest. And there was a village nearby that students could visit on certain weekends which sounded nice enough to Will. The school was divided into four houses, which sounded suspiciously to Will like fraternities at a university. You're 11. Why do you know about fraternities at university? But also, yeah. Each house was special for a reason, like being smart or kind or brave or cunning. 
which Will didn't know if he was any of those things. Will was more concerned with the fact that boys and girls weren't separated into different houses. He didn't know how he felt about living in the same house as a girl. Will was startled out of his thoughts as the fireplace in the room suddenly roared to life. I didn't do that, did I? Will panicked, not knowing if he should wake his parents or not. Then Will noticed the flames turning bright green, and despite his brain telling him otherwise, he moved closer, wanting to figure out how the flame was green. And the 11-year-old boy was almost sitting on the hearth when a shape began to appear. Will squinted, trying to figure it out, but soon the shape became more defined, and Will recognized it as his dad's cousin, Harry. The face in the fireplace was surprised. You're still up! Will, stunned, not sure if he thought he was dreaming or not, only nodded. The fire face chuckled at his response. I don't blame you, Will. This is another form of magic, isn't it? The blonde asked. Even though he should have felt silly for talking into a fireplace, Will found that he felt completely natural talking this way. The fiery Harry nodded. Fiery Harry. (laughs) The fiery Harry. (laughs) The fiery Harry nodded. This is what we magical folk like to call flu calling. Flu? Yes, flu. It's called that because it uses flu powder, a fine powder that turns any fireplace into a gateway between that and another fireplace. Will nodded again. So, if I used flu powder, I could go from this fireplace to, say, your house? Harry smiled. You know, you're catching on a lot faster than I did when I was your age. But there's still so much I don't know. I just spent an hour, and all I know is that Hogwarts is a castle with four houses. Will. What if I get to Hogwarts and I can't do anything? What if they tell me I'm no good and tell me to go back? What do I do then? Will. What if I don't make any friends? What if they hate me like Grandpa hates me? William, look at me. Harry's stern tone was not lost through the fire. Will looked at his future professor, trying not to show how scared he was. William, I know exactly how you're feeling right now. When I received my letter, I felt like my entire life before had been a lie. It took me an entire week of classes to make me feel easy about my ability to learn magic. Will couldn't help it. But I don't know anything about magic. Will, don't think that you are the first muggle-born wizard. Harry's face said to Will kindly, There will be plenty of other young witches and wizards just like you who have been special, but until recently, they didn't know why. They sat in silence for a good few minutes, the younger wizard just thinking, and the older wizard just waiting. Finally, Will spoke up but his voice had lost much of its volume. Dad, Dad said that thing, that weird things happened to you when you were a kid, when you were upset or scared. Unexplained things would happen. He said that Grandpa hated you for that. Harry listened quietly to Will, and then took another moment to collect his thoughts. These things have been happening to you, haven't they, Will? Things you could never explain, but you still felt like it was your doing? Despite how hard he tried, Will snuffled. I remember one time my teacher, Mr. Wilson, yelled at me for only having one white sock. I thought it was stupid, but he made me stand in the corner. I was so mad. His hair caught on fire. It was out of nowhere. First, the kids started laughing, but then he started screaming, and it wasn't funny anymore. He ended up with second-degree burns on his head. A sickening thought crossed Will's mind. I'm not a bad wizard, am I? Will half expected Harry to be cross with him. But the older wizard only smiled. No, Will, you aren't a bad wizard. These instances of accidental magic are completely normal. That's one reason why witches and wizards go to Hogwarts. The more you train your magic, the more control you have over your magic. So I'm not a bad person for setting my teacher's hair on fire? Not if I'm not a bad person for accidentally setting free a python on your father's 11th birthday. Will stared at Harry for the longest time. True story, I swear. Oh no, I believe you, I think. 
Will just sat, trying to collect his thoughts. What's your class like? My class? Harry paused as he thought of how best to talk about his subject. Well, the key word for my class is the fact that it is a defensive class. I focus on teaching students how to confront unfriendly curses, hexes, spells, creatures, etc. If they should ever need to. Will I ever need to fight off dark spells? Will ask in alarm. He didn't want to be fighting dark magic at 11. You never know, but I like to make my class fun and do mock dueling, which is basically having partners to take turns throwing spells at each other to practice the counter spell. Will nodded. That didn't sound so bad. What's transfiguration? Exactly how it sounds. Transfiguration is the art of taking something and turning it into something else. The young wizard brightened. Like turning lead into gold? He could get used to that magic. Heck, anyone could. Harry laughed. If that were possible, it would be illegal. We can't have fake money going around. It would be counterfeiting. It would be like counterfeiting a pound note. It is, that isn't a very good thing to do. Will looked down sheepishly. No, I guess it isn't. The older wizard smiled softly at the boy. It's all right. You'll get the hang of things. Besides, it's still May. School doesn't start until September. You have plenty of time to read up on everything and ask me whatever you need. But I want to know now. What are the houses like? Are they nice? They don't make you go streaking, do they? I don't want to do that, Will trailed off as he heard Harry laughing over him. The blonde blushed in embarrassment. Harry chuckled. I'm sorry, Will, but looking back on it, I felt almost the same way. I never thought of them like fraternities, though. They are kind of similar now that I think about it. Seeing the look on Will's face, Harry decided to better explain himself. When you get to Hogwarts, the first thing you'll do is be sorted. What this does is places you in your house where that you belong in and the house that will help you succeed. It's almost like a personality test. So the test will tell me whether I'm brave or cunning or not. Will bit his lip. He wasn't sure what house he would be in based on what he knew about himself. Well, there's that. Each house is known for something special, but the sorting is only the beginning. The house you get sorted into will be your family while you're away from home. When you do something good, you win your house points. When you get in trouble, you lose points. Every year there's a competition, and at the end of the year, the house with the most points wins. But of course, it's more than just winning points. During the year, you'll see your housemates every day. You'll be in classes with them, you'll eat with them, and you'll be on Quidditch teams together. What's Quidditch? Will asked, his brow furrowed in confusion. Harry smiled brightly. Why, Quidditch is a wizarding sport. It's similar to football, except it's played on brooms. Wait, you were serious when you said wizards ride on brooms? Should I start practicing in the backyard with our yard broom? Harry's firehead shook from side to side. You can't fly on just any broom. It has to be a racing broom, designed for fast flying. If you want, I can let you ride one of my son's brooms while you're over for dinner. Really? Will beamed? you'd let me do that? Harry's smile widened. Of course, I remember when I was your age. The first time I rode a broom was one of the most liberating feelings I ever felt. Yeah, because you were an actual natural at it. It was one thing you didn't have to learn. Yeah. Will bent forward, closer to the fire. What's it feel like? Like flying? <laughs> oh, right. <laughs> I'd probably say the same thing, but like, what's it like? What's like flying on a broom? You know, like flying. Oh. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Will fought to keep a blush at bay, but Harry just kept smiling. It's getting late. Perhaps you should go to bed. You have a lot to think over, don't you? Will nodded. He did have a lot to think over. I'll see you at dinner, Will. I look forward to it, Harry said. You're going to be a wonderful wizard. I can tell. Really? Will's heart jumped in his throat as the older wizard nodded. Happy, Will stood up to go to bed. Will? The blonde stopped, turning back to the fireplace. Harry's smile wasn't as bright as before, but it was just as kind. Will, you said you were... Afraid of not making any friends, right? Embarrassed, Will nodded as he scuffed his foot against the carpet. 
I want to let you know that you don't have to worry about that. I can promise that you'll have at least one friend at Hogwarts. Who? Will felt bad for pestering the man with so many questions so early in the morning. But he had to know. My youngest boy, Albus, he'll be starting Hogwarts with you. He says he can't wait to meet you tonight at dinner. The Hogwarts professor smiled, which Will returned tenfold. Thanks, Mr. Potter. I'll see you tonight at dinner. Good night, Will. Good night. The fire in the family room went out as suddenly as it had started, but Will was halfway to his room by the time the fire died. As William Jeremiah Dursley lay in his bed that night, he dreamed for the first time of dreams where he waved a magic wand and rode a broomstick. Why did Harry flu call them at two in the morning? I don't know. <laughs> like, why? What, like, were you just checking to see, like, what everyone was doing? Like, what if the whole family was still awake in the living room talking about you? Like, that would have just been awkward. Also, did you, like, swing by the office on your way home and get their fireplace on the flu network? Because it's a muggle household. Yeah, like, they're not just connected. And also, you don't work at the ministry in this story. Yeah, like, I have so many questions. Also, Will, you're not pestering the man with so many questions. Or so early in the morning. He rudely called you randomly at 2 a.m. And you just happened to still be awake. All right, guys. Thank you so much for joining us. Please subscribe and leave a review on iTunes. A nice one. And you can follow us on Instagram and Facebook at Through the Trapdoor 16 and on our Twitter at The Trap Door 16. Because Through the Trapdoor was too long for Twitter. <laughs> yep. And you can email us at Through the Trapdoor 16 at gmail.com with any story suggestions or if there's anything you think that we need to see, whether it's a meme or another fan fiction or if you have anything to say to us. Bye. Bye. Bye.